Well, right. And then one of the things that, that one of the pieces of statistical noise that they throw in is what they call age adjusted mortality rates. OK. And and the the scam that comes out of this is let's let's say for the sake of argument that somebody turned around and said, you have butt cancer. OK, you get a camera shoved up your butt and you have butt cancer. OK, so they find this. They cut it out. All right. Now, if you live five years beyond that point, you are considered to have survived that disease. You're not going to. That's just the way it is. All right. All right. But they found it. So you were diagnosed at the point that they shoved the camera in there. All right. Now, let's say that you didn't have that done, that you didn't have the, the examination done. And then. Four years later, you're crapping blood, and you go to the doctor, <laughs> all right? And you yeah. say, hey, hey, doc, I've got a problem, right? And he goes and he looks and he finds it, all right? Now, two years later from that point, or six years later from when the camera went up there, you die, and you die of cancer, all right? According to the age-adjusted mortality statistics, the test worked. <laughs> okay? Yeah. I, according to you, from your point of view... You're dead. You're dead at the same time, the either same way. Time. Now, what's even worse is that, let's say that they find this, and they do surgery, and they chop a section of your colon out. All right? Now, they then tell you, well, you should take chemotherapy and radiation because even though we didn't see any more cancer, we can't be absolutely sure there isn't more, right? Which is always true, right? I mean, you can only right. detect what you can see. Okay. If you say yes, your life, your quality of life is going to be destroyed during the time that you're taking that therapy. Yes. All right? Because your hair is going to fall out. You're going to feel like crap. You're going to be puking all the time, right. you know, yada, yada, yada. I mean, that's a given. There's, that's part of chemotherapy. It's a part of taking either chemotherapy or radiotherapy. You are going to feel like crap, okay, during the entire duration of that experience. Yeah, because the whole point of chemotherapy and radiotherapy is to kill what is part of the organism yeah. while th th that it's more susceptible to that stress than the rest of the organism. And, so and, you, it, and, and you hope it doesn't kill the rest of you. Right. That's, <laughs> right. All, that's exactly how chemotherapy works. Let's right. poison so, this animal, and the cancer parts of the animal will die, and eventually the rest of the animal will recover. And that's, we, it's, we hope. That's inherent. Right. We, we in hope that's therapy. what happens. Yes. Okay. So now think about this. Let's say that you say no, and two and a half years later, the, the cancer, in fact, kills you. Right. But for the last month, you have a fairly miserable time, and for the last two weeks, it's pretty bad. But up until that point, those two years and uh, two and a quarter years go by, and you live just as you have before. Okay, you still you still use the toilet the way you always have, you know. Mm -hmm. it, you, now, you may be an old person and so, you know, you're somewhat mobility limited whatever, but up until the last month or so, your life is pretty well normal. Now, let's say you take the chemo and the radiation and it's a 6-month course of treatment. During that 6 months, your life is a living hell. Maybe you recover, maybe you don't, and by the way, at the same two and a half years, you die. All right? That's a pretty bad trade, if you want yeah, my opinion. That's an right? interesting calculation, isn't it? Well, uh, by the way, and, I'm, I'm describing an actual case, my mother's. Right. Okay? She declined it. The doctors told her that she would be dead in six months. She lived another two and a half years, and up until the last month, her life was more or less normal. They wanted to sell that. Didn't they? Isn't it? Well, I don't. Uh, you know, it, awful. It, God here, Almighty. Well, here's the thing. I, in terms of out of her pocket, it meant it made no difference because you know she was an elderly woman. She was on Medicaid, right, or Medicare, right. So either way, it was paid for. So there wasn't a personal cost to her to go one direction or the other out of her checkbook. 
But there was a huge, I mean, you know, she would, look, she nearly made 90. So if you managed to get into your mid 80s without getting whacked by something, I mean, we all die of something. So if you manage to get into your mid 80s, uh, you know, you're, you're running on somebody else's time to begin with. Right. All right. But if you get an extra two and a half years and one month of it is bad at the very end, as opposed to God knows how much more time she would have gotten, but guaranteed that six to 12 months of it was going to be miserable. Right. You tell me that, that, that that's, that's a discussion that you should even really have with people. Join us this week on Starting Strength Radio. We are pleased to be talking with our friend Carl Denninger from market-ticker.org. Carl is a very, very intelligent man, and he's got his thumb on the pulse of what is going on right now. And we get into a, a rather interesting discussion about economics and what is probably going to happen in the near future here in the United States. If uh, if you I, I, this isn't going to make you sleep better, all right. So join us Friday to get your eyes open on Starting Strength Radio. <laughs>